So I'm resuming my monologues after many years, I guess. So um, if you want to offer me questions, what to speak about, I, uh, send me your questions. So I mentioned um, a feeling of guilt and a friend asked me to talk about it. So that would be nice. Obviously, right? So it's, if the whole thing is an illusion, where where is the guilt? And um, I'm talking about the just feeling of guilty while doing the right thing. Like I'm doing my work. I know I do best I can, right? As Bashar mentions. If you do best you can, be happy, right? And there is uh, fear and guilt. And obviously the fear is justified, obviously. But why guilt? So one of the ideas is we have been created uh, by the aliens as slaves. Science-wise, it's interesting to look at the timeline. I was very surprised to find out that Atlanteans want humans. Just look at recent channeling of Atlantean, of an Atlantean. So they want humans exactly. They were taller, there was a different it was a different race. And the humans at that time existed, but uh, I guess in very small amounts and uh, we were just secondary on, on, on the planet. We were just, I guess, more like monkeys, while Atlantis, Atlanteans were like gods. And uh, when they destroyed themselves, then the humans were used by the aliens to reconstruct them, to repopulate the planet. And I listened recently to a Russian channeler Anaya. And she drew a picture, described the picture, which was, feels very much right, that the Anunnaki were, in a way, very positive. They took an empty planet and tried to build a culture on the planet and did with their did it in their way. They did best they could. <laughs> and what she described was that it was a pretty prosperous society, a, a, a city town or town state, town state, where Anunnaki were in control and humans were trained to have the structure of the city, the culture, the technology, whatever technology they could give us so we couldn't destroy ourselves. But it was very regimented and structured. So it was nothing like now when like there is a at least an illusion of freedom, illusion of choice. There everything was under control and uh, and maybe that was the only way to create this, I don't know. So Atlantis fell, according to Bashar, the one of the last blows was 23,000 years ago. 
So I guess placing on the Nike on the timeline would be between 23,000 and maybe Egyptian history. It's like a few thousand years ago. So I assume every race that came, they would see an opportunity and they would create humans, hoping that humans would develop sufficiently so they can later incarnate in us. But because we were undeveloped, it wasn't interesting incarnating in us. So to have more of uh, fun when incarnating, they needed the human to be more developed and the society to be more developed. Otherwise, it would be going from their high level of technology and challenges and lessons to a very low level of technology challenging and lesson, challenges and lessons. So there was, a, you know, the stories of Orions doing that. And many others. Maybe Yael? Certainly Yael, yes. Maybe Syrians? Pretty much, pretty sure Syrians. Pleiadians? Orion's Pleiadians look similar, different. Same culture, just split into different um, polarities. Yeah, different polarities. So they engineered us to be hardworking. And another Russian person, a famous, one of the best poets of Russia, Mandelstam, 100 years ago, said that a sin of labor is in our blood. A sin, a sin of labor is an, in our blood. Meaning that The labor was genetically impregnated in us. And why is it a sin? I guess because when you have a choice between hard work or flight, hard work or flight, Flight meaning high vibrations. Or maybe that. When you have a choice between labor and God, you choose labor. When you have a choice between labor and prayer, you choose labor. So we catch, catch ourselves, not all of us, but some. And I do, certainly. We catch ourselves choosing labor for no reason, out of fear or just without reason. If we catch ourselves contemplating, meditating, we stop ourselves and say, yeah, let's do something, let's do something. We need to survive. Doing something is more important than meditation. That's, I guess, that's it. Meditation or labor. So meditating and feeling guilty for meditating, that's a paradox. And it might be there in, in the DNA and in, in the past lives and in this life. It comes from parents, education, upbringing. And on the other hand, Yogananda used to say, don't be lazy. So I guess it is a choice between 
smart labor and 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 stupid labor. Yeah, that's it. So the choice is between smart labor and stupid labor. So many of us, many of you, many of us, evolved spiritually to the point where we could work as magician, work as magicians. work as priests, do the work of uplifting the world, transforming the world through the prayer, through the meditation, through the inner work of the psyche. And yet we choose to go the old way, lower our, our vibration and, and work through our hands, through physical means, through, through pressing the button. So instead of working through the heart, we develop that muscle. Actually, that muscle for that finger is somewhere here. Yeah, that muscle here, it contracts and the finger. So that muscle, we uh, that's the main muscle we have right now, pressing that button, I guess, if, for those who use mice. So what's the answer? I guess it's already obvious, but let's speculate a bit. Fear is useful. <laughs> but um, you have to be condescending about fear. Condescending. Fear is a useful emotion. It's practically helpful. It allows you not to think, but to feel. If I do that, it feels scary. If I do that, it feels better. So we feel fear and feel attraction and follow the attraction, I guess. So it's useful. You don't have to think. You can just feel your way around. So the emotion of fear is okay. as long as it doesn't block the energy flow and it does block the energy flow so when the fear fear covers you and becomes dark then you are in trouble so playing with the fear as equals with respect and love and understanding its position is the art of living so getting feedback from the world is okay. From the illusion of the world, it's okay. I guess every time I remember about the world being illusion, there is a, an image from the Matrix and of Neo just over overriding, hacking, ha hacking the Matrix, ha ha hacking the Matrix. So it's all right to feel the fear, to feel their anger, feel their guilt but after that choosing choosing the light choosing love choosing positivity happiness progress mission choosing the mission right choosing to be on a mission so then the emotions just become Maybe not tools, but partners and working on the mission and going through the mission, evolving. So working with the fear and guilt is cool. Kind of you go into that, feel it, and then come back into finding yourself with a new, combining yourself with the feeling but, and making choices. And finding yourself. And yourself is not fear. Yourself is not guilt. It is something extraneous. Separate. It is 
Just feeling yourself in the outside world, feeling your path in the outside world. And now let's, let's give it some substance. So myself, okay? Yeah, much time of my day is, yeah, it is intensive work. Yeah, intensive work, pressing buttons, thinking, and it's very painful actually, physically. And finding that balance when there is no balance. Finding then that path when there is no path. Yeah, that's my choice, I guess, and it's very natural for me to be an explorer and walking through dangerous areas and actually feeling without you know without feeling you can't survive there. So you have feel your path. I at certain yeah, explorer and hacker, what's the difference, right? Hacking the system, hacking their nature, hacking the code, right? So I feel aligned with that idea to be exploring the new areas, like Neo, right? Neo is a hacker, right? And that way I feel very much aligned. So being busy much of the time and facing my fears in action, yes. Facing my fears in action. So I feel fear. I assemble myself, collect my energy and face it. And then don't fight. I don't fight. I, it's not my favorite. I compete, but don't fight. And through understanding, I guess, through research and understanding, intuitive understanding, I researched the area of the fear, researched the area outside, the new area. Explore it. And it when it's, it's not that I understand it well, but I get used to it, I guess, getting used to it. You intuitively feel your way through the new area I guess you need examples. Hold on. Like financial bookkeeping, right? <laughs> Registrations of companies. Not huge ones, tiny ones, but still. Yeah, the workshop, right? That was a fear, of course. You know, first time, organize. Risk. Take a risk. And how can you do that, right? How could I do that? Obviously, mm. having gym is a blessing. You have a phone line to, to all higher dimensional helpers you, you want, right? And that's a huge blessing. It's just funny. I, I, know, I know they are real, but you cannot be at awe all the time, right? You cannot be at awe you have to go forward as if it is a normal thing, right? Like, for me, biggest biggest channelings were of John Lennon and Jesus, right? And um, we just have to take it as a matter of fact, otherwise it wouldn't work. And the aliens, you have to take them as a matter of fact. Happy, but practical. Happy, but equal. Yeah, happy, but equal. Respectful but equal. That's one of the biggest secrets of the contact for the humanity. When humans can look at them not as others, but as equals, some of us, then the contact becomes possible. So now facing the fear of public speaking without having a, an audience is another fear, right? So I'm facing that screen which you will be there, right? You will be there watching just not now. That's the only difference. So it's a practice of working with time. Time is an illusion, but it's a very important illusion. It's one of the major building block of the space-time illusion.
And in practical magic, we are learning how to be friends with time, how to stretch it, squeeze it, look through the time, and use the time as a source of energy, right? We are, there is a wave which drags us through the time. And you can surf the wave, ride the wave. So the aliens would take samples of humans or individual humans, donors, in the last maybe 10, 20,000 years, would create new tribes, cities, cultures. And each culture would get an effusion, new, new genetics, the genetic design, new properties they would put. Usually they would create warrior tribes. Not always, but often they would create warrior tribes. So this tribe would conquer the earth and spread their genes, the alien genes over the earth. And also give the human culture a boost in terms of ability to work together. There were old cultures and there were new cultures. There was an old culture of India and then there were Aryans that came and Aryans, Aryans that came and took it over, created a new caste. Caste, caste, caste. Created a new caste. And only now, like in the last lifetime, in the last 50 years, the humanity breaks the caste system, breaks the nationality system, race system, and we all mix together. Now even the language barrier becomes much more transparent. The borders, government borders, the language, the television and internet combines together their the races, the governments, the races, the states, and uh, the layers of the society. So globalization and unification is happening, and that's all right. So what about me? I, I feel lonely, right? I don't know. Do you feel lonely? I feel lonely. I have friends, family, co-workers, hukala, gym. But like in this cartoon, like that is like, a major theme in Russian cartoons and fairy tales about an animal walking around asking, trying to find his family or their family, her family. And that is my feeling. I'm trying to find my family. People of my kind. Like traveling the earth from Russia to America and exploring the cultures, trying to find where is my culture. Maybe these are Pleiadians, maybe these are Yael, maybe these are Alpha Centurions. Yeah, there were a few times when I felt at home. In Russian um, science fiction, there, were, there are Strugatsky brothers. They're my favorites and favorites of many, of many people. And they're translated to English, by the way, Strugatsky brothers. Arkady and Boris Trugatsky. And they create, created a series of novels, kind of more like Star Trek, where they touch the same world of the future from different angles. And then there, through the, their books, there is a, I guess, a type of people, a vacation, vacation of, of people which is called progressors professional progressors, volunteers who would come to other planets, other races, and help their progress from inside, but without revealing themselves. They would become conscious promoters of progress. And I guess I certainly associate myself with that idea. The idea of progress is great and finding the way and showing the way 
That is the sweetest of what I can imagine. And by the way, Yogananda seems to be a wonderful progressor. Great example. So I invite you to join us, be progressors. If you feel desperate and lonely, just realize that is the fate of a progressor. You are lonely here because you are an implant. You are, not that you have implant, you are an implant here. And you can choose to be a progressor. An avatar, bodhisattva, progressor. Avatar, bodhisattva, progressor. Different words for similar meanings from different angles. I guess with that I will thank you for those who listen to the very end. Thank you all. I'm sending you Reiki. Catch it. <laughs>